Following Disney's initial announcement that a new trilogy of Star Wars films was on the way after their purchase of Lucasfilm, debates began over how the creative process would unfold amongst filmmakers. Making matters somewhat more confusing, actress Daisy Ridley recently shared that The Force Awakens director J.J. Abrams initially wrote drafts for all three films, raising the question of how much impact his narrative had on The Last Jedi. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Ryan Johnson is so dumb. Greetings, Star Wars. Welcome to the Outer Rim. So, you heard it. J.J. Abrams actually did write uh, outlines for not only The Force Awakens, but The Last Jedi and Episode Nine. And what we're going to find out here soon is that Ryan Johnson basically threw out all of J.J. Abrams' uh, outline for Episode Eight. So all the lack of cohesion in the sequel trilogy, all the dropped story lines, all everything that's gone wrong, uh, I guess you can lay that at the foot of Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson. But we all knew that. We've known that all along. The new information that's really coming out here is that there was cohesion. Those storylines that were dropped, they weren't supposed to be dropped, at least not originally. Um, some months back, I guess, it, it, it came out that uh, the story hadn't been planned beforehand, that they were you know, coming up with the the plot and the story as they were going along. And now it's coming out that that isn't true. That they had a story, they had continuity, and they just decided to throw it out the window because reasons. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't understand how this ends up happening. Where does this level of stupidity come from? But anyway, I'm not the source of information here, so let me get to what Daisy Ridley has to say about this entire thing. Here's what I think I know. J.J. wrote Episode 7, as well as drafts for Episode 8 and 9, really shared with Le Magazine Geek. Then Ryan Johnson arrived and wrote The Last Jedi entirely. I believe there was some sort of general consensus, consensus on the main lines of the trilogy, but apart from that, every director writes and realizes his film in his own way. Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams met to discuss all of this. Although Episode 8 is still his very own work, I believe Ryan didn't keep anything from the first draft of episode 8. So, Ryan and JJ did discuss this, and here's my problem. If this information was going to be released, what purpose is there for JJ to stick his neck out for Ryan Johnson's movie and make stupid statements such as the people who don't like The Last Jedi are misogynistic people who are afraid of strong women? It's not true, it doesn't need to be said, it's only going to piss off people who would otherwise buy your product. If you're trying to sell a product, <laughs> I mean, what kind of strategy is that? The actress's quote raises a lot of questions about the creative process of this new trilogy, with seemingly no official answer. Firstly, Ridley shares what she thinks she knows, which makes it entirely possible that the information isn't correct. Why would she share it if, it if she wasn't sure about it? And why would she think that? Where would she get the idea that this is what happened? She's fairly specific in her details here, so I'm just confused, I guess. So maybe if I read on. <laughs> However, Abrams working with Lucasfilm to solidify some sort of overall arc for the trilogy wouldn't be surprising. Yet it's also possible that when Ryan Johnson was tapped to helm The Last Jedi, all plans got thrown out the window so his vision could come to life. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me either. I mean, since when is the guy that comes in, in with the middle movement of a three-arc story th the most important visionary? I mean, you got the beginning of the story, which is very, very important because it's the beginning of everything. And then you've got the end of the story, which is very, very important because it's the end of everything. Why is the guy who's in the centers get to say, I'm throwing all this crap out because my vision is more important than anything? The middle of the story is the part that absolutely, positively has to draw the entire thing together. You can't have this thing that just totally wildly goes about and does its own thing. 
the middle should be the most stable part of all of it. I mean, this is why I think it's a bad idea to, you know, let directors become head writers. <laughs> not in every case. It's not a bad idea in every case. It's just that when you have a trilogy and you plan to give one movie in that trilogy to different directors, so three different directors get a movie each, don't let them become writers. Don't let the director become the writer for the first one, a different director become the writer for the second one, and a different director become the writer for the third one. That's ridiculous thinking. <laughs> Only an idiot would do that. It's like allowing three different master chefs to run your kitchen and try to make some sort of dish. What do you need three for? One's going to like mashed potatoes. The other ones are going to hate it. <laughs> These two goons got together and decided that it would be okay to scrap the entire plan <laughs> and start over <laughs> without really starting over. Jeez. But somehow Colin Trevorrow's the one who gets fired? <laughs> oh, what of all the backwards half-ass... <laughs> Based on the success of The Last Jedi and excitement from Lucasfilm, they announced that Johnson would helm a new trilogy of films and direct the initial installment. Now that's a bald-faced lie. <laughs> the Last Jedi had had no success when they made that announcement. The movie hadn't come out yet. Which potentially mirrors Abrams' involvement in the new trilogy. The filmmaker may have brainstormed three films, brought the initial entry to life, yet handed the franchise back over to Lucasfilm. Another confusing element about the whole situation is some fans claiming that changes in creative leadership can result in a disappointing product, holding the original trilogy of films to the highest standards. Those original films had different directors and different screenwriting teams, all acting under Lucas, George Lucas's overall outlook for the trilogy. Why is that confusing? Lucas told them what they could do and they couldn't do when they were writing the, the screenplay. Uh, <laughs> whatever, let's move on. Lucas has claimed that he knew how all nine films in the saga would pan out. Yet with the brief romantic tension between Luke and Leia in Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and sequel novels Splinter of the Mind's Eye, it could appear as though the sibling connection hadn't been finalized until later development of the series. The next chapter in the saga was written by Abrams and Chris Terrio with Abrams set to begin filming this summer. Episode 9 lands in theaters on December 20th, 19, 2019. Does it matter to you if the overall vision of the films evolves over time with different filmmakers? Let us know the comments below. Well, it matters to me. It doesn't matter to me now because I know they can't fix it no matter what they do. They've already shit the bed. But like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll be aware of new videos when they go live and as always, if you're listening, you are the new bar, 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 the new bar. The new bar. The new bar. The new bar.